Hey y'all, my name is Taylor. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today I'm so excited to help announce the Southern Charm Readathon for 2024. So I am one of the co-hosts for the readathon. It is hosted by Book Lover Amanda. And before I get into any further details, I wanted to show you the trailer she made because I think it is absolutely fantastic. And if you've already seen it before, well, it's so nice you gotta see it at least twice, right? So here you go. Again, the readathon is hosted by Amanda, and then Oshina, Alicia, Lindsay, Sky, Teresa, and myself are co hosts. And I will have everyone's information in the description box so you can go check them out if you aren't already followed or subscribed to them. So I am so thankful to Amanda for asking me to do this. I am so, so excited. She asked me a few months ago, and I was just over the moon. I, I cannot. I could not wait to do this and now that it's here I have all these ideas of what I want to do because if you didn't already know I am a South Carolina girl I have lived here all my life all my family is from here my husband's family is from here I have pretty deep roots my family history and South Carolina specifically goes all the way back to at least the 1700s uh, we have a American Revolutionary War hero in my family so that's pretty cool uh, she has a monument in, in, in her name and everything so it's pretty cool uh, but yeah I I just love the South I love my state South Carolina I'm pretty proud of it and um, I just could go on and on about how much I love the South because like our accents I think are so interesting in uh, just some of the best talking that there is and there's such a range of them too like my accent I think is pretty more subtle more softer kind of sounding uh, versus some other parts of the south are more deep more deeply southern and I just loved hearing it all it just I don't know it just makes it feel like home almost hearing somebody else uh, southern talk and it makes my own accent come out a little bit more too um, I think our food is some of the best Honestly, I think it's the best <laughs> food in the United States. Uh, we that good old Southern cooking, like it, it never gets old. I mean, I could eat that pretty much every meal if I wanted to, but you just there's nothing that can can beat it. Sweet tea. Um, I grew up on sweet tea. My mama used to make some. I actually inherited her sweet tea pitcher, so that has a special place in my heart. Um, uh, nobody can make it quite like her anymore, but I still enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of what else <laughs> that um, that I could say about the South, but it's just so ingrained in who I am. Oh, I am wearing a, a Southern shirt, I think. I don't know the rest of the United States or even other parts of the world if y'all have, like, t-shirts. I think that's a pretty Southern thing for us to have, like, sweetly Southern t-shirts and, like, on the back it'll say like we eat mashed potatoes and green beans and we say y'all and bless your heart and we go to church on Sundays you know <laughs> the little sayings on the back if y'all know what I'm talking about let me know but um, we we have super cool shirts in the south but anywho um, about the readathon so the Southern Charm Readathon is going to be for the entire month of May. This is 2024 when this is being filmed. But um, yeah, the whole month, which is awesome because I can't do week long readathons. So I'm always like, oh, yay, whole month to work with. And this is a pretty laid back, easy readathon. We love those because you only have to read one book to participate. We do have a bingo board. If you can get all of them, that'd be great. But 
only one to participate. So that is pretty cool. You can double up on prompts, so make those books work for you. You can double up, triple up, however many ups you want to, which is super cool as well. And you can use any genre. It doesn't have to be Christian fiction. You can, of course, if you want to, but it can be secular or Christian fiction, mixture of both, whatever you want to do. And that is it. It's pretty easy peasy, but I'll have it in the description box as well if you want to take a peek. So as far as the prompts go, I'm going to tell you what all of them are. If you participated last year, they are the same ones. Um, but I have a list of suggestions um, and examples, if you will, of each prompt. So if you need some ideas, maybe this might help you out. So the first one is Bless Your Heart, an emotional or heartwarming book. So the first one I'm going to say, I don't actually own, I need to get my own copy, but it is Pearl in the Sand by Tessa Afshar. And this is an emotional, heartwarming book, in my opinion, because it is a book about faith. And um, this is a Rahab retelling, and it goes through her faith walk and how she gets closer to the Lord. And there's even a romance in here, so I absolutely loved it. Another one is When the Day Comes by Gabriel Meyer. This is, I would describe as an emotional roller coaster. Like, hold on tight. <laughs> you were in for a wild ride. Um, this one has been going around bookstore, booktube by storm uh, in, in the Christian booktube world. And if you haven't heard about it, I'd be very surprised. But it is a uh, dual timeline. This one character, uh, she lives in two timelines and she has to pick which one she wants to live in by her 21st birthday. That's in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it than that. It is a part of my favorite series of all time. Highly recommend that one. It would definitely work for the emotional part of that prompt. Next prompt is Sweet Tea, a book with something sweet on the cover or a sweet story. Uh, one of those would be, one of my recommendations would be to Break a Silence by Lydia May. This is a sweet fairy tale retelling of The Little Mermaid. And then I would also recommend a Narnia book, whichever one you need to read if you're in the middle of the series. Um, I recommend starting with a Magician, The Magician's Nephew, specifically this one because it's super cool because it is the illustrated version. So you get little pictures along the way, which I find so fun and makes the reading experience even better. But this is Narnia's origin story, which is why I say start with this one because it is the chronological start to the um, series, but I, I recommend that one. Hot as Blue Blazes, a book with a hot setting. And I have quite a few for this one. Highly recommend all of them. The first one is The Mark of a King by Jocelyn Green. This is set in New Orleans. So that's a very hot and humid part of the United States. Um, and this is the story of a girl who is forced to immigrate to the United States as a French prisoner. Um, the forced immigration and it's a love story. It's a story of survival. Lots of faith. Uh, next one I have to recommend is Counted with the Stars by Connellan Cassette. This is a biblical fiction story set in the time of the Exodus. It is about a Egyptian slave who um, goes with the Israelites out of Egypt. Also a salvation story, which is really good faith. Ooh, my books are falling. <laughs> Next one is Last Light by Terry Blackstock. This is a um, kind of a an apocalyptic type story. Uh, basically all of the electronics, anything that has an electrical current stops running. So cars, planes, generators, anything that has that related to it stops working and people have to figure out how to live without that. And it is set in, I think it's Birmingham, Alabama. Yes, I was right. I was like, please tell me I'm right, but I am. So it is quite hot in the summertime without AC in that one. So yes. And then the last one I'll say, I told you I'll have a lot for this one, but I got excited for this prompt because I had so many and these are all super fantastic. So 
Last one I'll say is Love and the Little White Lie by Tammy All Gray. I recently got my own copy, so yay. Um, this one is a salvation story as well. It is about a young woman who is not a believer, but gets hired by a church, and she comes to know faith along the way. There is a love story in this one as well. It has a love triangle, but it, I think it's done pretty well. I usually don't like those, but I think it was pretty well, pretty well done. And this is a obviously a contemporary romance and one of the few that I've given five stars to. So this one, I'm pretty sure is set in Georgia. Not a hundred percent sure, but it has got some like summer type vibe feelings. Um, so it will definitely work. Heavens to Betsy, a mystery or thriller that will shock you. The first one I want to suggest is the first book of the Annie Peterson series, Edge of Dusk by Colleen Coble. This is, uh, I think it's three or four books? I can't remember. Um, but they're all super fantastic. Uh, this is about a young woman whose sister was kidnapped when she was a child, and she's been trying to find her ever since. Um, she's grown up, and grown up to be a law enforcement officer, and she's... Um, figuring out some some mysteries, crimes along the way, some family drama, highly recommend. Cold Pursuit by Nancy Mel. This is the story of two, well, it's the beginning of a series, about two ex-FBI investigators who start their own PI company. And the first case they get is from a mother who wants them to find her uh, then 16 year old son he went missing four years ago and then the last one I'll say is a thriller Christian th thriller series if I run by Terry Blackstock this is a quintessential thriller in the Christian community so if you haven't read this you should really get to it because it is a wild ride um, this is about Casey Cox and she um, uh, is being implicated for the murder of her friend. So she is on the run from the police and her, her journey to try to evade them because they are corrupt and trying to clear her name. And it is a three part series. And if you do get to this, you probably want to have all three lined up because you will speed read, fly through them. All the fixins, a book in multiple genres. And the best example I have for this is In This Moment by Gabriel Meyer. This is book two from When This When The Day Comes, uh, the Timeless series. So this particular book is set during 1861, 1941, and 2001. So I would say a magical realism because she's able to cross timelines. Um, and then uh, a little bit of contemporary and historical because 2000, I think that was pretty, pretty contemporary. Chicken and Dumplings, a book you think will be a comfort read. And I think this varies person to person, like what exactly is a comfort read to you. But um, I think just generally speaking, anything in children's classic, children's literature, um, I think would be pretty comforting. And for that, I would highly recommend Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. I think that Anne and her positive outlook on life and her, the way she formulates things and thinks about things uh, and just brings light to, to the world that surrounds her. How could you go wrong with Anne? Hey y'all, a book with more than one POV. I have a decent amount of recommendations for this one too, but Recorder by Kathy McCrum. This is Christian science fiction. You have a phenomenal set of side characters that you get flashbacks for them in this book in addition to the main character. So you get different points of view that way. Hope Between the Pages by Pepper Basham. This one is a tool, dual timeline book. There is one in the 1900s, one in the contemporary time period. Um, the contemporary one is about a young woman who is trying to save her family bookshop and she's uncovering family mysteries. And the 1900s one is about the woman that the contemporary character is uncovering mysteries about. So I really enjoyed this one. I will say that um, if you are particular about um, physical intimacy, like it is Christian fiction, it doesn't get 
explicitly detailed or anything, but it may brush the line for some people. Just want to let you know, you can check out my Goodreads if you, if you want a little bit more information or you can message me if you're curious. Waves of Mercy by Lynn Austin. This is also a dual timeline. Um, one timeline is about a woman throughout her life. Um, she emigrated from, um, Holland to United States and her walk of faith. And then it is, I think, 50 years after that, there's another young woman who is coming into her faith. So this is purely historical fiction. One is more historical than the other, but it is so, so good. Howdy Partner, a book featuring friendship or family. And I immediately thought of this book, Veiled in Smoke by Jocelyn Green. This one is um, about two sisters and a father. The father is experiencing PTSD, although that's not what they, you know, called it back then or treated it uh, well back then um, after he got PTSD after being in the Civil War. And um, there was the Great Chicago Fire, and during that fire, um, their father is accused of murder. So it follows different perspectives from all three of those characters in this book. This book is very emotional hitting. Um, it touches on a lot of hard topics. So I think you probably would have to be in the right mood for this, or at least I personally would, would have to be, um, but it is really, really good. Ariadri and the Legend of the Fire Rose by Christy A. Cole, who is also in booktube. But this is about Ariadri. She is going to a school for girls, uh, learning how to uh, fight and uh, do graceful, womanly things like gardening and writing, but also they're learning how to take care of themselves and uh, hunt and all the things. So the reason why I bring this one up is because friendship, she is going to school and living with all these girls and she's developing the friendships along the way, along the way. This is YA. So you really get that feel of, um, being in school, boarding school and learning who she is and how to be a good friend and all the things like that. Last one I'll mention is Sherlock Holmes. So Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are some of the most iconic friendships in all of literature. So I had to mention them. I recently read The Hound of the Baskervilles. It's the only Sherlock Holmes book I've read so far. But if there, if that one is anything like the other books, I highly recommend all of them. I really, really love that story. So Sherlock Holmes. A lot of these you can a lot of these books you can cross-reference. So if you have any questions about any of them, about how they can be used multiple times, I just mentioned most of them. I mentioned the main way I would use them, but if you're thinking about using any of the other books, just let me know and I'd be happy to help. That's all the things about the readathon. I really, really hope you'll join us. I think it'll be so much fun. The more the people, the more people that participate, the more fun it'll be. So I will be releasing my TBR for the readathon closer to the end of April. That's the month we're in April. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that. But uh, that, I think that's all. So let me know if you plan to participate. I'd love to hear and I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.